Hi, so one more example to use the ratio test to determine the radius of convergence of this power series. So let's get into it. So again, we're using the ratio test. And we want to check the limit when n goes to infinity of the a n plus 1 term divided by the a n term in absolute values because we're checking for absolute convergence which implies convergence. Uh, so I'm going to write it like this. And I'm going to uh, negative 1 to the power of n plus 1, x minus 3 to the power of n plus 1, divided by 2. Be careful here. I have to write 2 times the n plus 1 plus 1, right? And now instead of dividing by the a n term, I'm going to multiply it by the reciprocal. So the 2n plus 1 goes on the top. And the x minus 3 to the power of n goes on the bottom. So this becomes... Um, oh sorry, I forgot the negative 1 power to the n. But these are going to disappear, right? This, um, I, I would have a negative 1 to the power of 1 in the numerator, but it's inside the absolute value bars. You can just ignore it. So I'm going to have the absolute value of x minus 3 to the power of 1 right because these terms here um, this term with this term only one power survives in the numerator and then what I have on the other parts is uh, a 2n plus 1 in the numerator and a 2n plus 2 plus 1 plus 3 correct and I don't need absolute values on these parts because they're positive so like we did in the past this becomes x minus 3 is not part of the limit, so I can take it out. I'm taking the limit only of the 2n plus 1 divided by 2n plus 3 part. And again, this limit is 1. So the only thing we have here is x minus 3 times a 1. This part, this limit is 1 because it has the same, number, the same power in the numerator as the denominator. If you want to do it carefully, you would be dividing by n each term. So you have 2 plus 1 over n divided by 2 plus 3 over n. In the limit, this is a 2 divided by 2, so it's a 1. Okay, so if we got that, this means that the limit is the absolute value of x minus 3. And the ratio test tells us that this will converge. This means that the series will converge if uh, x minus 3 in absolute value is 1, which, sorry, less than 1, which means that the center of, we know is at 3, and a, but we know now the radius of convergence is 1. If you ask to find the radius of convergence, the radius is 1. So I asked something else. I asked to find the interval convergence, which is one more step. I need to check the endpoints of this interval. So I'm checking endpoint, endpoints now. So let's check the endpoints. Uh, let me do x equals. Um, so if you want to write this as an interval, it really becomes x minus 3 just to be uh, steps by steps, it would be between negative one, be sandwiched between negative one and one. So when you add a three, the x is between four, and add a three, and a two, right? So it's a centered at three, radius one. So you move all the way to four on the right, and all the way to two on the left, right? So if you see the interval in your head, this was centered at three, and you go to four, and you can go to two. So this is the interval right here. So it's a two, right? Not negative two, it looks like. A positive two. Okay, now I don't know if on the endpoints I should include the endpoint or not. And that's what I'm going to decide now, right? I don't know if it includes or not the endpoint. So, so I have no idea what's going to happen. So let's, I just put some pictures there, but I really don't know what's going to happen at the endpoints. So let me do it again. Right now, I just know it's here. Okay. So let's check out x equals two. That's the endpoint on the left. So at x equals 2, uh, I'm going to plug in a 2 into this expression, okay? So let me write it here because I have the expression a little bit far. So I'm going to have, it's going to become, at x equals 2, I would have negative 1 to the power of n. Uh, 2 minus 3 becomes a negative 1 to the power of n divided by 2n plus 1, right? 
So I'm going to grab that and put it over here. Sorry. So I'm going to move it over here because I have my fancy iPad. I can do that here. So it becomes this at x equals uh, negative 2. Sorry, at x equals 2. So this is really just a um, positive 1 in the number. Oops, sorry. Had a 0 or a 1. Sorry, a 0. Okay. Uh, this is really just 1 over 2 and plus 1 because I multiply negative 1 times negative 1 every time to the same power. So it's negative 1 to 2n if you want to see it that way. Um, so this is just, um, it behaves the same as the harmonic series, right? This is one of those when we do the by the limit comparison test, you can with um, bn equals 1 over n, uh, you do the limit, if you remember what that means, do the a n over b n, you would get um, 1 over 2 n plus 1 divided by 1 over n, and you get uh, n over 2 n plus 1, which goes to, sorry, I should write the limits here. Um, let me just, instead of writing that way, let me write this. So this goes to 1 half. I'm doing it very quickly here on the side. And the limit conversion test told us that if you have if you compare it with another sequence, and the other sequence, uh, and, uh, sorry, and you get a number, not zero, if the other sequence converges, your series converges, and if the other, sorry, if the, yeah, if you, and if you compare it with the terms, the sequence terms of another series, and if the series uh, that you compared it with also converges, your original series converges, and also if your other series diverges, it diverges. So here, this one diverges if you add, it's a divergent series, so this one diverges. So um, this is divergence at x equals 2, using the limit, limit, limit compression test with 1 over n. Okay. Now you have to check at 4. So at 4, uh, let me look at it here. What's going to happen at 4? Well, at 4, change colors. At x equals 4, I would get negative 1 to the n. 4 minus 3 would be 1 to the n, so I need to write it, but, and I have 2n plus 1. And this one is going to be a, a non series, right? So let me grab that one. Oops, sorry. Let me, I didn't select my tool, so let me grab that one. I'm going uh, to copy it this time, and I'm going to decut it this time. I can go down here and paste it. So I get this, which is convergent using the alternating series test. So it's very important that we write which test we're using to have a clear argument. And here it's alternating series because all we care for the alternate series test is that um, your terms of your s that you're adding to the sequence that you're adding go to zero and they're decreasing. So if you want to check here, uh, 1 over 2n plus 1, if this is your bn, um, clearly bn goes to zero and bn plus 1 is smaller than the bn. Those are the two things you need to check um, for this one to be true. Okay, so it converges at 4. It does not converge at 2. So there we know. We know it now that it was like this and like that. That's my interval of convergence. Okay. Um, huh. So now what we can, what I want to do a little bit more on this one is show you what this talk I have. Desmos open right here. And I wrote the series um, up here in the top left corner. And I wrote the line x equals 2 and x equals 4, which is my, my radius, my interval convergence. So now what you can see is, so this, I defined up here in the red function the, the series, right? Uh, but I only adding 10 terms, right? So it, it, it crosses past the x equals 2 and past x equals 4. So I'm going to add more terms in here, and I want to see what happens. If I add, uh, let's put, um, let's try to put 100. 
Let me try to put 20, because probably you're going to, let me do a 20. So see, I don't know if you noticed, but by doing 20 terms, it got narrower, my, my, my function, for, for I'm putting here, so it's not, it's, it, it might need more terms, right? And if I want to get even more, if I want to add, I'm going to try to put 120 terms that I'm adding. Take a while to update. There you go. So you see, it's going to get more and more narrow. And if I kept, if I be able to do this, this function would not be defined past four, or so it would be defined at four. That's why you have this corner at the four. You can't see it over here in this corner. It's a little bit closer, and uh, will not be defined at uh, two. You have the asymptote. Okay. So I'm pretty sure that I'm, I cannot go much bigger than that in decimals. Let me just try having 120 terms adding up. Let me go to 220. You're going to update in a minute. I think it hasn't updated yet. There it is. It, yeah. So it got a little bit more. So the function is only defined between uh, 2 and 4, not defined at 2, it, and the limit it will be defined at 4. Okay. So we have a chance to talk more about these pictures and what it looks like in the next sections, but this is what we're doing.